followers of the channel. It's the time of the year again, usually around this time, when I have to make space in the house for new stuff coming in. And in the past, I've gotten some, some hateful comments and thumbs down from people uh, saying, why are you selling stuff and you're entitled and you should just give it away to charity. <sighs> There's still a huge disconnect of what people think my job and the job of my colleagues on YouTube is and how we generate income. Generally, when it is a high priced item and it stays here so that it can be shown continually to you, which is a benefit to the company. If I regularly play an Ibanez AZ, then Ibanez is happy. The deal for that is, at least on my channel, if it's a high ticket item, I will not show something on a long-term basis if it's not mine, because there's no way to monetize that. Uh, I'll play the guitar, play it, play it, play it, and then it goes back. How am I going to charge the company for that? Every time I take it off the wall, I charge them 50 bucks. That's dishonest, because then I'm playing it for money. No, the guitar's mine. I'll play it whenever the fuck I want to. If it really appeals to me, that's great. I play it a lot. If it works great for a certain type of video, I play it. It's got to be honest. So anything I show long term, my deal is it's got to stay here. There's no loners. But I will then not charge for the video. So my normal fee for the video is waived. So I make the, the actual review. And if I actually think it's not something I would want to play or something that doesn't appeal to me, it goes right back to them. Okay. Uh, it doesn't make sense to show something that I don't get behind, that I don't like. And... Then there's a guarantee of X amount a month that it definitely stays here. It might stay here forever. I might keep it forever. Uh, there are a lot of factors, what stays and what goes. But my main factor is space in this room. I've got more room upstairs, but what's the point in guitars hanging in the living room for decoration being worth thousands of dollars? So the big problem is with that deal, which makes sense for the channel and for the brand, it doesn't pay me. I have bills like you. I have dogs, a girlfriend, cats, a fridge that needs to have butter in it, and maybe some bread next to the fridge. You get the idea. So the only way to monetize this long-term placement of products is that at some point, they move. They get out of here. So let's take this Ibanez AZ, for example. My AZ2204 TAB, which is a brilliant guitar. I love that damn thing. It's going to hurt me to let it go. But Ibanez doesn't make it anymore. So why would I put it in front of a camera to tease you with it when you can't buy it? So the logical thing is it moves on to a better home. And I show you the new model that you then can buy. So I will be getting the 2204, I think, N, the one where the trim is on the top and it's blue. Um, I, Color-wise, I like the TAB more with the nice stripey stripes. But the point is that new model is something I can link to and therefore have affiliate money. It makes sense to have the things here that you can buy other than custom guitars. So I hope that makes sense. It doesn't mean that I don't like the equipment and I will comment on the guitars that you can buy. But I have to move this stuff regularly so that these videos are paid for. There's stuff that I get and I really love it. I'm like, hey, uh, I'd really like to keep that. I know we agreed on a fee, but how about I waive the fee? I keep it. Uh, I play it on a regular basis. And then I have a great guitar at some point. And, and that might stay forever, but at some point it might have to move. So if you just want to hate on me for being an entitled little rich fuck, it has nothing to do with this. This is actually part of how the channel makes money. Um, it has to be. There's no other way around that. And also, I know we all love a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of good guitars. And some of these moving away will hurt me a bit. But come on. Come on. Sometimes you, you got to empty. I, I, I have to buy things <laughs> and not guitars. So let's start. 
The way it's going to work, there's a PDF below. Do not, do not, please, it happened before. Do not ask me, is this still available? If a guitar sells and it's actually gone and I've gotten the money, I will take it out of the PDF. So whatever is in the PDF is the actual current availability. Not what I'm showing in the video. Consult the PDF as soon as I sold something, I'll take it out of the PDF, I'll re-upload the PDF and it's going to be up to date. That is how you know what is available. Not what's in the video, not by asking me, is it still available? Please be smart about this. That's why I make the PDF. That's also where the prices are. I'm not gonna comment on them. Please look in the PDF. And then you can also see other things that you know I might not show in the video. Um, I think you can trust me. Otherwise, why are you watching the channel? So we're doing this through PayPal, friends and family. All good. Guitar shipping and uh, amp shipping most certainly because the heavy and 240 volts can't be done to the US. Uh, we can ship amps to Australia where they have 240 volts, but uh, shipping is quite expensive, like really expensive. Um, guitars, if you really want one of my instruments and there's no other way around and you can't get it anywhere else and you live in uh, the US, Australia, Asia, I will look at shipping rates for you. Uh, shipping you have to cover. But it might be such a good deal or the special instrument that you're looking for so that it makes sense. It makes the most sense within Europe. But again, let's talk. I'll figure out the shipping rate for you. Not a problem. I'll wheel over there and look at guitar number one. So here's the Ibanez 2204 TAB from the very first Ibanez AZ line. Oh my God, I love the color. Look at the flame on it. Of course, with the tab switch, it's got nine different sounds. It's the same sound back here on the humbucker. Um, it's got the s -Tech treated neck. This is the one guitar in the room that it doesn't matter what the weather conditions or humidity conditions are, it's always in tune. That's because of the s -Tech treatment. Um, it doesn't look like it, but it's got locking tuners. Uh, open them here uh, with a little screwdriver when you want to take the strings out and they self-tighten. Playability, of course, is amazing. We've got Lumen Lays. Um, it, it, is, it is a phenomenal guitar. I, there's no other way to say this. This is, of course, the prestige version, and uh, it comes in a hard case. It's, it's everything you want from a modern, super flexible, pretty amazing, playable guitar. Uh, I think original price is 2,500, and it's, it's 500 more expensive because of the pretty top. So, if, uh, and you can't get these anymore. This, you can get the AZs. If the color doesn't matter to you, buy a different one. But that model in that color isn't available anymore. PRS CE24 Semi Hollow. Now, I have a little bit of a love and hate relationship with this guitar, because it is, as a tool, very good. It sounds fantastic. It's got a coil tap, uh, very thick on the humbucker sounds, but beautiful on the single coil sounds. Playability is to die for. But I have a feeling PRS is making these deliberately cheapened. So as to say, well, if you want a real PRS, you're going to spend 5,000 bucks because in Germany, this clocks in at 2,700. Now it's got the PRS locking tuners, killer, but the birds are plastic. Why can't there be abalone? Harley Benton guitars have abalone. Um, these cavity covers are plastic on top of the guitar. That's absolutely unnecessary, but it's deliberately done so that the guitar feels a bit cheaper. Comes in a gig bag. Gig bag at 2,700 bucks. 2,700 is a very upper level instrument. Um, th those things bug me a bit. Now the top is very, very nice. I mean, look at this, but you can see depending on the angle, there, they, right there. That's amazing, right there. That looks really nice and matching. And then, oh, nope. Oh, oh. So really depending on how, on how you're holding this thing. Um, again, it's, uh, it's a bit weird to me that PRS is doing, you know, plastic inlays. However, if you're looking for a mind blowing tool, the, this is full on PRS when it comes to playability and everything. Um, Oh, my price is extremely fair. Uh, this says on the back, to Henning, enjoy, all the best. And then there's a thing from Paul Reed Smith. So just cross out Henning, write your name in. Um, that's it. Why am I moving this? It's been here for long enough. 
I have a PRS Modern Eagle, and when it comes to semi-hollow, I've got uh, a Stanford, and I've got two PJDs, so I'm, I'm kind of set for semi-hollow, and um, it would now be time to move on to show another PRS, if I work with PRS, uh, which I don't really. Very, very special guitar. I've had this for a long, long time, custom made for me by Magnus Quenzel to show off what he can do. This was a guitar to be shown on the channel, but it has been shown. It's been a long time. I don't play it enough. And what a waste for such an amazing custom instrument. We'll call it the M3. So um, it just got a brand new GraphTech bridge from Yoshi Luck and Klopman Hammer and Anvil. These pickups are 550 bucks by themselves. So the guitar originally was 5,900 euro. It is a very phenomenal instrument. We have a one-piece Svetenia mahogany body, very thick. It's, it's a little bit on the heavier side, but it's a very thick piece of Svetenia mahogany. You see the big ass top right there. Um, of course, a very thin, nice figure maple. Maple fretboard with nice stripes. Look at the back of this thing. This is a very high-end instrument. Uh, we have GraphTech locking tuners on there, right there. It had shallows, but I was very much not happy with the shallows. So we put the GraphTech ratio locking tuners on there. They're the best tuners out there. We have call tap on it, uh, which with push, push. It's just, it's just a really, really, really great guitar. And I'm taking a shit ton of money off because it was a custom instrument um, from a like ma literally master luthier that he's got the master title um i just saw because it's been hanging on um the rubber wall hangers and this is a beautiful nitro uh that there is a little bit of well wear and tear right there where the hangers were don't know if you can see that right there nothing that's going to kill the guitar but just to let you know those should be really the only Dings and dongs it has. Oh, two little dents back here, but that's about, and you can't really see those. Um, uh, let me know if you're interested in this. It's it's as custom as it gets. Of course, it's got a bone nut and all that stuff. This is super high end. As I said, originally 5,800 euro, um, and I'm taking it down a shit ton. Um, don't have a case for this, but I will buy you a case, no problem, uh, and it will be shipped very safely. This one's gonna hurt. I'm not gonna lie to you. I love the concept of this guitar. The elongated body with the V in it, where the V is, uh, the, the body is flat, but the V is actually carved. Oh, that, uh, here you see the mahogany. This is made, what a beautiful design. Neck through. This thing has sustain and warmth and roundness for days. Music Man type neck, but painted. Amazing uh, heel joint here. We of course have locking tuners on this. It's a Music Man Armada. Uh, the whole thing being mirrored here in the inlays. It's a three position, no tap. Les Paul type inspired. Well, it's got a neck through. It's not really, but I mean, it's a, it's a set neck, neck through, uh, neck through actually. Uh, guitar, round, fat, warm. Leads on this are as good as they get. I was playing on this over and over and over. Now, I love the color. I love the matching headstock. I love the originality of the shape. I love everything about it. Why am I moving it? Well, I do YouTube reviews, which means I will show and play what makes sense for the YouTube review. I don't, if I was just a guitar player in a band, I would very likely rock the shit out of this and it might be my main rock axe. But I've played it, I've shown it, I've done my job, I've done the review, it's been here long enough. And now, when it comes to Les Paul type or set neck or that type of sound, I'm playing the heritage guitars, which I now have. So now it's my job to, you know, put them in front of a camera. 
And the other thing is, it doesn't serve Music Man for me to play this. Think about it. It's not a model you can't get anymore. For some reason, people weren't buying the Amados, so Music Man decided we don't make it anymore. This is no more produced, which means what's the point in advertising it through my channel to you, which is in a sense what, what I'm doing, I'm advertising. Advertising something and putting effort into showing you something that you can't buy is just gonna make you pissed off. So even though I absolutely love everything about this, keeping a high-end guitar of this value here makes no sense. These sold for 4,000 bucks. Comes in the original Music Man case, very, very well protected. Um, if you're looking for an Amada, there, is, there are none on Reverb. Most certainly not in the Amazing Blue. If you're interested, let me know. Similar reason, my Maybach Lester Midnight. I love Maybach, I love the people from Maybach. They're gonna send me more things. I don't know what, apparently it's gonna be a surprise. But I have more single cuts than I need at the moment, which means the Lester, which I've shown a lot, will go, the heritages will stay until a time when there's something else. Okay, this is what I do on the channel. Uh, great guitar, amazing value, super aging on this. I mean, really, really nice little dings and dongs and all that stuff. Especially the rounded off tuners on top because they don't have the little line in the middle. It's it's a phenomenal guitar. It is on the rounder side, not the aggressive side. Of course, depends on the strings and all that stuff. But bang for the buck, you're getting a very classic looking single cut for not a lot of money. Again, this is going to hurt me a bit because look at this top. Look at this top. Again, same idea. I have a new batch of single cuts in, so it doesn't make sense to keep this. And I've got two coming from a very, very special friend of mine. Can't tell you. Um, so, <laughs> oh man, this amazing expert flame from FGN is just way, way too cheap. Um, I mean, look at the top. It's utterly freaking ridiculous. Look at how thick that top is. And you can see the flame in the side. Hmm? 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 Um, cool inlays. Neck is. Satin, so this is all high gloss, this is satin. No locking tuners, okay, you can put them on there if you want to. Two-piece bodies, yep. And a great heel joint right there, really, really cool. And it's got Klopman, like 59 inspired, I think they're called the SB59 or something like this. Wow, these are 550 bucks by themselves. I think that's like a third of the price of the guitar or something. Uh, comes in a case. No clue why this hasn't moved yet. I've had this on reverb for a while. This is the Heritage Standard from Prestige Guitars. Seema Duncans. This is not a veneer, people. This is a real thick maple top. And in that price range, that is utterly insane that you actually have a real thick maple top. Seema Duncans. Look at the binding. I would describe this as the modern rock single cut. It's fat, it's defined, it's got oomph. It's not vintage -y inspired, but it's just a phenomenally good guitar and it comes in a case. And if you look at the price, it, uh, that's a freaking joke, people. I just recently got this. Not expensive, super light because it's a hollow body from Stanford. Now, why am I already moving this? Well, apparently Stanford right now has trouble delivering the electric guitars. The acoustic guitar factory is working. Electric guitar factory apparently can't deliver. It's Corona and all that. So advertising a guitar that you can't really buy at the moment doesn't serve them, doesn't serve me, doesn't serve you. So showing you something that you can't get, pointless. I'm showing you this because you can get this for, again, Frickin' ridiculously cheap, even comes in a case. Yeah, it comes in a case. And watch my video on the Marquis, I think there's, well, yeah, the Stanford Marquis. It's a really, really cool guitar on a mid-budget, I would say.
something very special. Friedman NoHo 24. Now you haven't seen this in many videos and I just recently got this, but I didn't get it as compensation for videos. I got it as compensation for something else um, from Friedman. And it is the typical super strat, the 80s, the 80s super guitar. You know, two humbuckers, Floyd, there's a, wait, is that called a tap? No, it's got five position. In the in-between positions, it's as sparkling as it can get. So, original price on this, 3,700. Why in the world am I moving this? Locking tuners, like open, open geared locking tuners. Gr I mean, amazing shreddability on this. Well, there are several reasons. Reason number one, I kind of need a Floyd guitar and it's kind of right now my only Floyd guitar, but I'm, I'm not gelling with the original Floyd. The, see, this is loosening. So if you're, if you're used to that, if you're a classic Floyd guy, sure, get it. And it's just not filmable. It's red. It's a red black burst with a really cool top. But it is, it's, it's extremely hard to film. In a, in, a, in a lot of lighting conditions, it looks black. So I wish I had this in, you know, green, light blue, whatever color that pops more. But putting this on camera doesn't do it justice. Uh, for some reason, directly from the factory, it's got this. And it's actually painted over. I mean, a lot of the Friedman guitars are aged, so maybe that was a little homage to, yeah, we don't really have to fix whatever we did here. We're just gonna... We're just gonna leave that. The rest is brand spanking new. I've only had this uh, for a short amount of time, but it doesn't make sense to have a guitar that I'm, because of the Floyd and the Wiggly thing, I'm not so gelling with. Uh, it, it, it can have a better home somewhere else. Um, I installed in the back a trem switch. So watch my FZG trem switch video where we install this, where you just, you take this off and you can lock the trem with one move. You can unlock it. It's a little mechanical device uh, worth, I think, 80 bucks. I throw that in for you. It's installed. It's not in the way if you don't want it. If you want to lock the trem and do drop D and all that stuff or change the strings easier, it's there. Comes in the original case if I haven't said that. This is a good guitar. Fender American Ultra. Everything you like about the Strat, just a little bit updated. Well, we have a humbucker, of course. We have this switch, which I think does single coil, five position. I mean, it's got this Arctic sparkle white. The sparkle we can't really see anywhere. It's got a little bit of spark. Yeah, there you can see the sparkle, see? Yeah. Locking tuners. Um, easier, thinner, heel, neck heel there. Overall, it's a very good Strat. I compared it to the Ibanez AZ in a video, and this is Stratier than the AZ. The AZ is uh, AZ isha. AZ Rio. A I don't know. Comes in a very good. Fender hard case, usually clocks in at 2100, something like this. Why am I moving it? I frequently do Fender reviews and I have the American Pro 2 in a beautiful blue with three single coils. That is a classic modern, it's Fender's classic modern interpretation of the Strat. So when I need to show a Fender instrument, which sometimes I do, I have one. How many Strats do I need in the house? When it comes to like super level Strats, I have my Shabbat Lion right there. Uh, was that the Lynx? I'm gonna say Lynx. That's what that is. Anyway, I have really high-end strats. I'm getting the uh, AZ2204, so blah, 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 blah. I have the Fender AM Pro 2. I, I can't just keep every guitar that comes in the house. And this, this has been here for a while and been in many videos. Vola Vasti V2 comes in a gig bag. Surf green, is it your typical telly? No, it looks freakish, but Vola makes good guitars. 
it's not a chunky neck, but it's between super sleek and chunky, so medium. I don't know. That, that's the neck right there. Locking tuners. Uh, V3, which I now have, and it's right there, has a bit of a thinner neck. Uh, it, oh, yeah, this is a single call option for the back. Look, if you don't need the tally to look like a tally, but it can look like a bola vasti, this thing kicks ass at considerably lower price than what Fender asks for. It doesn't look as traditional, but boy, is it a good guitar. Why am I selling it? Well, I have a V3 now. How many Vola Vastis does a man need, really? Uh, you're gonna say like 17, okay, I get that, but okay, for my purposes, it does make sense to keep this here because I have this and the Osroa, both great guitars. So if you want this, it can be yours. Just as the Lester from Maybach, and the FGN, another single cut has to go because new single cuts have moved in. And it doesn't mean they're better or worse, it just means they are the single cut of this period on my channel. That's just how it is, okay? Love the guys from Eastman. What a phenomenally unique guitar. Antique violin varnish. This is a one-piece body, look at this. I mean, come on. One piece body, it's got Lola Imperials in it, yes. If you look at the price, okay, that's a freaking joke. Comes, of course, in a case. Um, this is made to the highest specs. It is made in China, but it isn't OEM. It is made in the Eastman factory by Eastman employees for Eastman. And these guys have learned their craft through making mandolins and jazz guitars and acoustic guitars. And then they moved on to solid bodies. These are thought after, okay? This is easily worth twice as much, easily. Love this thing, but again, I can't keep everything so it can be used. Now this I've played a lot. This is one of the guitars I actually played live. We played that live in Frankfurt in a stadium in front of 10,000 people uh, for the rock, big rock thing, I don't know, with lots of other YouTubers. Why did I take this? Well, because I needed a flexible guitar, humbugger single coils, and I needed one that I could just, you know, lie on the stadium floor if I needed to, uh, because it's all beat up anyway. So uh, taking this guitar out is cool because you, you feel like you don't have to pay attention to it as much. Um, it feels phenomenal. Really wooden feel of the neck. It's not even, it really feels like a piece of wood and the fretboard is aged to shit. Look at this, I love this. And then the little dots. I'm not a big fan of red, but when I picked it at the factory in Los Angeles, I said, let's go for red because I don't have a red guitar, so it'll stand out on my channel. Now, why is it going? It is a great HSS Strat. Uh, does it have locking tuners? No, it does. I think it does. I don't, I don't even remember. I don't know. Um, because I have the Shabbat, which is literally the guy that developed this guitar, making a custom guitar specifically for me. So in terms of specs and all of that stuff, the Shabbat is kind of like this, maybe a little bit of a step up. So it does make sense for me to have the same guitar kind of twice. And I have other Friedman guitars like the Metro D, which I love showing. So I think it's totally okay to let this one go to someone who wants a kick-ass rock axe. It's, it's fun. Uh, when I took it from LA, I didn't take the case. I got a gig back for it, but uh, we're gonna find a case together to ship it in, unless you wanna come and pick it up yourself. Last guitar today. I just recently reviewed that. There's no reason for this to stay because I have the American Pro 2 and other strats from Fender and other brands. So uh, keeping the player plus, not the biggest necessity here. It is the new player plus, locking tuners, I think a really cool color. Um, there's a push pull for the single call back here, five position switch, oh, it's a Strat. It's, it's a good guitar. The pickups are a little bit on the bright side. So if you need massive fatness, that's something you might want to look at, but they are, 
rather inexpensive. It's a great guitar and literally it's been in a review and one or two videos and that's it. So you can get this for a couple of hundred bucks off from brand new and it is essentially brand new. Let's move on to amps, if you're still here for some reason. Obviously amps, the same thing. I've got amps in Studio B, loads of them. I've got amps here. I've got amps in a room as storage and it doesn't make sense to have really nice equipment sitting there uh, being in my way. And I know that's a massive first world problem, but the point is moving these amps, selling them onto you. After I've done my job for the company, honestly, is a part of how I get paid for my work. And my work is very time intensive and not cheap. You don't even want to know the camera that I'm looking into. You don't. So let's move on some stuff. Houston Kettner, Spirit of Vintage, little amp. Uh, it goes for almost no money. Doesn't have an effect loop. With this one, doesn't really matter. It's a decent amp if you're looking for something really small and fun. Same thing with the rock. It's got too much gain, so just keep the gain down. No effects loop. Hmm. That bothers me a little bit, but watch the video, you'll see my pros and cons. Spirit of Metal, even more gain, a little bit differently voiced, no effects loop for metal, you might not even care. Better than the Nano Series, Ampman Classic, two channels, effects loop, DI out, built in IRs, noise gate, you can even program two different channels with noise gate and different caps, uh, 30 watts, on your pedal board, the Atman Classic, really, really good. Uh, this is a great product. The Nano Amps were fun for on the table. This is really good for not a lot of money. And here's the modern, the clean channel is the same. The second channel is pretty much a revoiced metal channel from the metal version with more uh, detail on the gain knob. Again, these, they hit it out of the park with them. Rev G20. Oh, but Henning, didn't you say the G20 is really good? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much a great clean channel with a white knob to make it thicker and a purple channel in 20 watts, 6v6 as far as I know, um, with a built in torpedo. So you can run this without a cap, XLR out. Watch my video on the G20. It's a great box then why am I selling it? Because I have every rev amp that they have, almost. So for the small amp, you can see right there, there's my D20, which is the pedal platform amp. And I have a rev generator 120 Mark III, which is the 120 watt version with captor built in, even in stereo and uh, it's got the purple channel. Also in Studio B, I got a 100p purple thing. Like if I have the big ones, what's the point in having this? Unless I wanted to take two gigs and blah, 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 blah. Maybe some people could find a point in there if you're, you know, but again, it doesn't make sense to hoard things. Some of you would love to have this. I'm taking the price down from, you know, whatever to whatever, look it up, have fun. Some of you might be very happy that I'm selling this. I've used the Achilles Argos in Studio B quite a bit, and every time I go to it, which is this classic JTM bristle, almost on the verge of fuzz, very vintage sound, um, many of you are saying, oh, I love the Argos, I love the Argos. To me, the JTM isn't my desired sound. I like headroom, I like, I don't want the sag. This is a JTM with a lot of great functionality where, for example, on a real JTM, you have to bridge the channels with the cable, which you can do here. You don't have to, there's just a switch for it. Uh, I don't know which one. And bam, they are bridged. Um, you can take the EQ, the tone stack, completely out with one flick of a switch. There's a bright, there's a something, uh, there's um, on the back is a master. Uh, there's a master, there's an effects loop. 
And you can also take that out. So you can go as classic, super bare bones JTM as you want to with the switches and take everything out you don't want in the chain, including the master volume and everything. Or you can make it a little bit more practical and modern by clicking in the master. You're saying, okay, I have a JTM, but now I can control the master and so on and so on. So uh, this is over 2000 bucks from Australia, from Achilles, great brand making tweaks to classic designs. Uh, I ordered it in this color. I showed it a bunch, but it is time to move on. Can be yours. One of the first boutique camps I ever had on the channel. I love the guys from Karl Martin. And I said I would never sell this, but it had to move on from the amp rack. Now it's sitting in the, in the, in the other room collecting dust. That's sad. We're not going to do that. This is the Karl Martin Custom Shop 50. You can only get this directly from Karl Martin. It's a phenomenal pedal platform. I think if you bought this in a store, I once calculated it with what you pay at Karl Martin. And if, if you then add a distributor and a store, or whatever, uh, it, this would be around 4,000 bucks. I'm not kidding you. I have the matching 212, which I don't know if, they are, if I have the original box or if I could build a box. Would be a good idea for you to stop by if you're in Germany and actually pick it up. This and the 212, what a mind blowing setup. It's so good and put pedals into this thing. It's the bee's knees, it's, it's the holy grail. It kind of is. So if you want something as boutique as it gets, Karl Martin Custom Shop 50 is your amp and I'm selling it. What am I, what am I asking for that? Yeah, that's a joke. With the, with the cab? That's a freaking joke. And I can ship it. That'll be difficult, but I can. But uh, maybe make a day out of it. Come by. Another purple beast, the La Boga Diamond Sound 50. The Diamond Sound 50 alone clocks in over 2000 bucks. 50 watts of raw Polish power. Great clean channel a little bit of a mid push and a lead channel like for leads it's insane the uh the drive it's not a modern a gent drive but it's beautiful for the thick power cords watch my video on it uh i have it in beautiful purple and uh, gold and i even have the matching 112 cap for it and i'm selling it as a set that together is a beautiful setup of course you know there's effect loop that, that's it and there's, there's a remote for the channel, which I, of course, have somewhere, and I will find that for you. Uh, I'm selling this for way too cheap. This is great. Watch my video. Now, you all know Jet City as the company that makes the Soldano clones, officially licensed from Mike Soldano in China for cheap. Now, this is not that. This is the Jet City Emilia. And that is more of a Marshall-voiced thing. Watch my video on it. It's a great amp. Many people desire that amp. For some reason, Jet City isn't making it anymore because maybe it wasn't doing the sales numbers that the Soldano clones were doing. But it's really, really fun and not expensive. I don't even know what I'm asking for it. Yeah, not a lot. Um, full tube amp, I think it's 50 watts. Effects loop, two channels. I think there's a boost. Yep. Channel one, two. Overdrive on off. Uh, oh, yeah, there's, there's a built-in overdrive. So you kind of have like a tubey screamy thing in front of it. it. It's it's a great amp. And especially for that money, if you don't have a lot of cash, but you want a real tube amp, Jet City Emilia, no on sale. And I have the original box on my mom's, in my mom's attic. Kylo Dulo. Never been opened. Why? Well, because I had the prototype for the video and I made the video and it's it's a great amp. It's under 200 bucks. Pedal board amp. I think it's 30 watts. This is the limited edition. And then when I was done, I sent the prototype back and they sent me a brand new one in the box, which is really, really cool. So you can get that for a steal if you need a pedal friendly amp for your pedal board to go to a cab. Kylo, Dulo, that's it. Also pedal board amp. Different beast, 30 watts, zero from Thermion, fully stereo, meaning it can go to two cabs. 
It has a stereo effects loop. This is the one for the pop rock worship people because it's fully stereo for all your effects. It has a very clean, super pristine clean preamp and a built-in reverb, which is very, very nice. But then you can actually, you can take the reverb out and you can take the effects out, I think. Yep, effects, reverb, and you can switch to an external preamp. So what you're doing is you're wiring in an external preamp and then when you're clicking this, the internal preamp is off and it's sending you external preamp, so pretty much your second channel then, to the power amp. Uh, it's a really cool design. It's a little bit heavier. It's a little bit bigger than like the Dulo or something like this. But sound quality wise, amazing. It's got a stereo XLR out and uh, that has a built-in analog speaker simulation on it, which works, but no IR loading, no any of this. And you can't even turn the speaker simulation off, which is the one gripe I have with it. When, if you do cleans, if you do overdrives, if you do worshipy stuff, if you do any ambient stuff, this is your pedal board amp, trust me. Many people have said so and shown so. That's not just my opinion and I don't just want to pedal this on you. I know it will find the right person. So that was my pitch. Where's my coffee? I made coffee and now it's, now it's probably cold. Okay, I'm um, thinking that was it. I have pedals. I'll make a separate video for that. So thank you for watching. Please consult the PDF. Um, write an email if you want to buy anything to I want this at henningpauli.com. I'll make that email. I want this. At any point to come, let me know. Let's talk. Let's see what you want. Let's figure it out. Um, it'll all be fair. And uh, it'll help me move some stuff out of the house, feed the dogs, put money in the account, which again, not everything on this channel is paid for. Some stuff is in trade for the gear. But then obviously at some point, that's also an understanding with the brands who are all okay with that, that gear needs to move on. Okay. Some stuff like the Car Martin Custom Shop, for example, I bought. I bought it for a deal. That was when the channel was smaller and yeah, I wouldn't just get gear and trade for videos. Um, sometimes we do this. We say, okay, well, give me a deal. But then that means at some point, maybe because we need money, we need to sell it just like you. And I'm doing it through the channel. So please, please spare me the hateful comments of why aren't you donating this stuff? Because this is part of the business model. How is this so difficult to understand? Yeah, you see all this stuff and you're like, oh, the guy's got money. No, 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 no. I'm not buying any of this. How are you not? This isn't so difficult to understand. Thank you for watching. Comment below, whatever you want to comment. The PDF is as a download under the video. Please consult it for what's available in the pricing. Thank you so much. And we put, as always, animals at the end.